getting steals, pushing in transition, getting back on the other end, doing it again. There was a stretch, and you mentioned it several times, where Dalen Terry, who I thought played really well, I, I believe he was a team high plus 17 That's on correct. the night. Um, just felt like he really generated a ton of those opportunities. Only ended up with two steals, but when you're just putting the team in positions to get up and down the floor, I think it makes a world of difference because we know when this team stagnates, they have a hard time scoring. But mm -hmm. when they can sprinkle in some fast break stuff and then the ball starts moving a little bit, they just look like a different team. Let's uh, let's talk about Dalen a little bit. Sure. I know, Dave, you want to. Uh, Wesley yeah, Rizal in the comments saying, Dalen Terry Appreciation Night. Mm -hmm. um, Cole Krug saying, Dalen provides so much out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there were a few more out there uh, showing love to Dalen. Um, th I mean, this was just one of those nights where you're like, ah, the Dalen doubters of yesteryear Dalen are like, doubters. I. Nice. And again, a am I doing cartwheels because the Bulls won this game and are now. Of course you are. Three, He's going to say he is. Three aren't games you? under 500 instead of four games under 500. And now with Trey Young and that injury news, you know the Bulls are just locked say into yes. hosting that 9-10 playing game, and I'm so stoked, so stoked about that. No, I, no. I <laughs> as I expressed on one of our recent shows, I'm using these final 25 games to look at the potential growth of some of the younger sure. guys on this team. Sure. Dalen Terry, very much at the forefront of the growth I'm looking for. Yeah, because we've already seen a lot from Kobe. Obviously, we've already seen a lot from Io having a bounce back year after his sophomore slump year last year. Uh, you know that Julian Phillips is my sweet special boy. Yes, Dalen is the one I've been skeptical about. Yes, so it's 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 a weird circumstance that has presented Dalen with this opportunity to play as minutes as he's going to get down the stretch this season, mm -hmm. and o only fifteen minutes tonight. Yeah. He only played 15 minutes tonight, and the impact he had on the game when he was out there, I felt like he played 30. That part right there. Well, you know, I talk about this a lot. Um, and to you, too, I talk about it, the rhythm of the game. But mostly me. Yeah. <laughs> the rhythm of the game. Um, it doesn't matter certain times if you make the shot or miss the shot as long as you got the rhythm right uh, of the game because basketball has a way of rewarding you if you're playing it the right way, if you're doing it and you're doing it correctly. And there were several plays that Daylon Terry wasn't. It wasn't about the shot that he missed, but it was just the rhythm of it and the rhythm of the game. Going and getting those loose balls uh, and those 50 50 balls. One of them he got called for a foul on. I didn't think it was a foul. I believe it was on Brandon Ingram or Valentino. Mm -hmm. so one of those yeah. guys. But, oh, yeah, that BS loose ball foul. Yes, yeah. correct, correct. But the rhythm of the, the way he was doing it, even when one, he went up for the layup, just how he went up for it and he missed it. And I was like, oh, that was a beautiful play, though, what he did. And they still got rewarded on that because that ball started playing ping pong mm -hmm. and they couldn't score and then the Bulls didn't score and they didn't score and the Bulls took it from them and went down and scored. So you could be rewarded if you're just doing it kind of the right way and within the rhythm and the confines of the game. And I thought Daylon Terry really did an outstanding job of that. The passes he were he was making, like, this is why I was so excited about it because I'm turning the wheel. Like, Will, did you see that pass? Like, it, it might look like a normal pass to y'all, but – the precision and where he was putting the ball is exactly where, as a shooter where mm -hmm. you want somebody to give you the basketball. Like right here on the offhand. He was hitting hitting you on the offhand so you can move into your spot and then really sync up your your, that, your body and then take that shot, man. It, it was a perfect pass, and he did that a couple times. The one times. transition pass he had that was like he was coming through the lane and then kind of a little bit of a no-look. I can't remember if it was Io or Javon who kicked it, it out to you. Yeah, it was Io. I was thinking it was Just Javon. A, oh. <laughs> I'm talking about that first. It was one to Io. I guess he did it twice. Yeah. He did. No, he did because he did one to Io when he was on the elbow. He did one to Javon yeah. also. There was on, one on where he was elbow. cutting from the weak side wing into the middle and right. he hit Javon just right into his offhand pocket mm -hmm. where he could get into it. And as we've talked about with like Dalen, I mean, dating back to summer league this year, I really like some of the tools that he has. He just needs to be in a position to unlock them Ooh, where, where he like has that. trouble is when he has to create his own offense. But when you put him in positions where he's like doing these stampede cuts, where he starts catching the ball on the move, he's in the middle of the lane. Now he can really display his passing. And that's really, I think one of his best skills uh, where he can make good decisions, find guys on the wing. Um, and, and so I think, for him, he's not going to be someone that you just put the ball in his hands and run a bunch of pick and roll. Sure. But they don't need that. They need somebody who can be a connecting piece, mm -hmm. who can continue to make passes. Now, the jump shot is still a work in progress. Correct. I think he was just 0 for 1 tonight. Mm -hmm. um, he still needs to be able to get to the rim and finish a little bit better. Yes, mm -hmm. he, he had the one run out layup um, or dunk maybe. 
that was his no, one basket. Yes. But yeah. still, right. um, just within the half court, I think there's still a lot of room for him to grow. But when you are getting as many deflections and steals and putting your team in transition and making the extra pass and connecting uh, the ball from side to side, it just there's a lot to like there. It just needs to be in the right setting right. for him mm-hmm. to really do well. No, absolutely right. And and also just his aggressiveness when the ball is up and he you know he's going to the bucket to try to get that rebound. Right. Like he turns every single rebound into a 50-50 ball. One that just might look like it's an obvious rebound for the other team, he immediately turns it into a 50-50 ball. And he had a jump ball uh, situation where he was going at it. I can't remember if it was, again, Valachunas or Ingram, but somebody who was bigger than him <laughs> So mm-hmm. it, is my point. But he's in there scrapping with that player, trying to get that basketball from him, man. Like, playing that way, you will always be rewarded some kind of way when you're playing that kind of way and you're playing that kind of basketball. And the other thing is when you – it's, like, kind of hard to see when you're watching him every day – but when you take a look back at what he looked like physically when he got yeah, drafted to yeah. now, he has put on a ton of muscle. Sure. He's gained a ton of weight. He had four fouls, and I think that's going to be an area where he needs to kind of pick his spots a little bit more. Maybe that results in, you know, you, you got to pull it back a little bit. Maybe that doesn't mm-hmm. result in as many steals and blocks and things like that. Um, but that'll keep him on the floor longer. But just the ability to, one, you see the work ethic. Yeah. Where yeah. he's really putting in time and effort into the weight room to, to get his body in position to be able to now guard those bigger guys. Yes. And I think that's a really big key. Obviously, Patrick Williams now out for the season. They need big wings to be able to guard up. Mm-hmm. And I think Dalen's going to have a real opportunity here to prove he can do that. Uh, Paul Williams giving a shout out to not only Dalen, but the entire bench saying bench mob played well today. Much needed boost. Colette saying more like Dalen scary. Huh? Geo saying Dalen showing a lot of promising signs. Fingers crossed the shot improves. Gabriel saying that dunk attempt was good from Dalen Terry. Yes, I forgot about yes, uh, yeah. that was awesome. <laughs> I loved every second of that. That's how you do it. Forget the layup. I don't care if you miss, man. He went up so strong and tried to get the finish or the foul. Yeah. And because the refs suck, they didn't give him the foul. But it didn't lead to a, to a basket for the other team. Right. The Bulls still got the ball back. Because, again, when you're playing in that rhythm and playing that kind of right way, you will be rewarded. The basketball guys will reward you. That's how it happens. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, shout out to Jelly, who threw us a $5 super chat. Yeah. Uh because we're on the topic of Dalen, we'll just get to it now, saying, I didn't know it was possible to kick Dalen's frenetic energy into another gear, but here we are. Good Lord. Plus minus, plus 17. And I think, like, that's the, the crazy part of it is, you know, you, you pointed out he, he missed the only three he took tonight, Will. He was one of four overall from the field tonight. But he was, as Jelly just pointed out, a plus 17 in 15 minutes off the bench. Mm. And that is kind of like, I feel like tonight was a, just like the perfect microcosm of who Bulls fans want Dale and Terry to be able to be, not just this season, but in seasons to come if he sticks around, which is the guy who is not going to be one of your primary scoring threats on any given night, but somebody who can play defense, make key plays on the defensive end that lead to offense, yeah. and then also has the abilities in transition, as as someone with solid court vision and great passing and playmaking abilities, to generate some easy buckets for for himself and or more primarily for his teammates, yeah. because that's what he did tonight. Yeah. He took four shots. He had two points, and he was a plus seventeen off the bench in fifteen minutes. Yeah. When, as someone else pointed out, uh, I, I think I can't remember who in in the comments recently, like the Bulls bench dominated tonight. And they dominated despite being outscored by the Pelicans bench. Mm-hmm. But everyone other than Terry Taylor off the Bulls bench tonight was in the plus column. And everyone in the Pelicans bench was double digit in the minus. Mm. Mm. And I feel Say like so. D- Dale and Terry deserves 97% of the credit for that. 97.5. But like just the way that Dalen play, I, I like the fact that maybe we'll some of this. About basketball for a second. No, no. Maybe, maybe th- some of this was definitely out of necessity. Because you don't have, you know, your wings, your big guys there. But I do like the trust that Billy Donovan put in him. Because I kept saying they had a funky lineup out there with him basically running the point. And always, obviously, I feel like that's where he's at his best is when he's handling the basketball and distributing. And the fact Billy left him out there because it worked. <laughs> you know what I mean? And everybody was actually touching the ball. Finished with, what, 29 assists? Am I right about that? 29 mm-hmm. assists, I think they got yep. assists. Okay. So, so, yeah, man, like everybody was connected. And you talked about that a lot, Will, just about how it's all connected. And, 
And I think Dalen was a huge part of that. That's the point five I'm talking about. I thought he was a huge part of that when Billy actually saying, you know what, I'm going to leave you out there. And he did it even in the fourth quarter. For me, that's the trust part. So doing it in the, in the second quarter like he did, obviously guys need rest, whatever like that. But doing it in that fourth quarter and allowing him to still be that guy and then having it work and him having that trust that he put in Daylon says a whole lot, man, because Daylon is one of those guys who is earning every single minute mm-hmm. that he has out there on the floor, man. And that's why you it's easy to fall in love with a player like that, especially for on the Bulls. And when you say trust, I mean, it's not like – he was the first guy off the bench. Right. Today, that was Terry Taylor. And that's mm-hmm. been Julian Phillips the game before that. It's been Dalen at times. Like, we all talk about this situation with the injuries where these guys are going to get minutes. And they probably are. But it's not like Billy's got a go-to guy right now. And they still have a chance to earn a spot in the rotation, even with all the injuries. So, uh, that was a great step forward for, for Dalen, I thought. But these guys got to continue to put in the work and, and show that they can not be... Um, negatives in any point i think right. just just being consistent yeah. um the fouls i think is a big one that caruso and billy have both talked a lot talked about a lot um and not giving them not giving up any negative plays where you're putting other teams on the line mm-hmm. um but so yeah plus 17 in 15 minutes even though you have four fouls i think that speaks to <laughs> yeah. the, mm-hmm. the positive contributions from him so he's just got to keep that up yeah we all silly like the mayor 